able to accomplish from the air, and, and that you didn't take out you know, all this infrastructure, because I was talking to him about we were really trying to preserve the infrastructure so that now as you rebuild Libya, you know, that, that it wouldn't be as hard for you. And he goes, I, it, was just, it was just unbelievable. And he talked about, he goes, I myself went to, you know, one of the, um, one of the shelters and saw that, you know, here's an aircraft and here's the, here's the age equipment. And I saw the bomb has come through the hardened bunker and hit the aircraft and preserved the age equipment. He goes, you guys are just amazing. I didn't have the heart to tell him that that obviously was pure luck. You know, there's no, <laughs> we're not that good, but um, anyway. Um, Ma'am, so you said all the coalition was in the AOC when you were doing the personnel recovery. What kind of impression yeah. do you think that yeah. left with them? Do you think that helped the coalition form a little bit? Yeah, thank, thanks for bringing that up because that, that was really, I was really happy with that, that they were able to see how hard we work and how the entire team comes together to, to rescue um, our air crew. And I had every single one of them um, from all 13 nations that were joining us come up to me afterwards and, and talk about how that was so impressive, the way the team um, worked to, to make that recovery happen and how they were able to pass that to their air crews and how, how much more comfortable they all were knowing um, how competent those CSAR forces are and, and how that whole process works. And they, they were incredibly impressed. Well, I'm kind of moving away from the Odyssey Don a little bit. Um, throughout the working with the coalition, Odyssey Don, and all the other leaders you've, you've worked with, who do you think has been the most impressive leader and kind of why? I know you mentioned the, uh, the AMC commander you, you had a lot of respect for. Um, it, you mean during Odyssey Don? Uh, just or throughout just your forever? career, man. Um, well, you know, I think I'm just really impressed with the quality of leadership that, that we have. I mean, there's, there's a lot of really amazing uh, leaders out there that are so self-sacrificing, you know, that are willing to do uh, um, any number of things. And, um, and not just in the United States, but um, in, in our allied nations as well. Um, I, you know, I've got a lot of uh, heroes out there. Uh, I, I'll tell you, I worked for General Welsh, I think, for four straight years, and uh, and he's an amazingly impressive individual, and and the support he provided me, you know, as as an example, when um, when everything kicked off. Uh, you know, I was really excited because they hadn't figured out that it was a female who was the JFAC, you know, and, and in the press. And I said, thank God, you know, so we can, we, we don't have to worry about that. And then stuff started trickling, trickling down and, and it was like, oh no, you know, now are we gonna deal with that? And he was really good about saying, hey, you don't have to worry about that. Just focus on what you need to do, you know, do your work, we'll, we'll hold off the hordes, you know, and he said, you're gonna have to pay for this sometime, you know, and you're gonna have to deal with it. But for right now, you know, you can focus on that and, uh, and getting that kind of support um, was incredibly valuable uh, uh, um, to be able to focus on what I needed to do, to, to get the support of, of giving all the USAFE assets, you know, and what do you need, what, what, what can USAFE, what can Third Air Force, you know, give to you to help you do your job. So that was really impressive. Um, working for uh, General Ham, who was the AFRICOM commander, he was phenomenal. Um, you know, as supportive a commander as you can imagine, and just uh, really uh, focused on the mission, um, not not focused on his own um, uh, needs whatsoever. I just just a lot of really good leaders out there that I think um, I am uh, amazed by. And, and what I'm most impressed by is the um, servant leaders out there that are, um, are really focused on the people that work for them rather than their own. So. All right, ma'am. So uh, we're kind of getting to the end of our time. So in closing, it's obvious that uh, there's a risk inherent with our line of work, uh, the loss of jet and honesty, Don, and so forth. Uh, how, as we progress into positions of increased leadership, do you, do you recommend balancing that risk with command or other leadership? Yeah, I think that's the number one, you know, when, when uh, I have folks ask me all the time about, you know, leadership advice or, um, and, and generally I just say, hey, if, you know, if I can't be a good role model, at least take me as a horrible warning. I think that's, you know, probably the best thing I can do. But, but I do really like to emphasize that um, 
I, I think as an Air Force, if, if, if I could make uh, you know, a very personal point, is I think we're too risk averse. It, it, you know, and, and that's obviously a subjective position. Um, but I really want to be careful, and, and that's why this group, I think more, you know, the future of our Air Force, if I, if I could say one thing, is, is you know, don't be that selfless leader that's able to um, seek success and not fear failure. And the reason I say that's selfless is because if you're too worried about your, in, your personal career, that you're afraid to take risks because you're afraid of derailing that career because of a risk you might take, then you're never gonna be an effective leader, you know? And, and you're, you're not gonna be able to get that success that, that is so important. Um, and and I, my, my big push for you is, is to really focus on, um, you know, seeking that success and not fearing the failure. And, and taking the risks that obviously evaluate them and make sure that you're very doing a very, very good analysis of the cost-benefit ratio, if you will. But, um, but the, the folks that worry me the most, I think, are the ones that are really adverse to making any kind of risk. Um, and I think that that will get us in a lot of trouble. You know, what makes us really uh, great as an Air Force is our ability to be bold and innovative, and we can't do that if we're afraid of, of risk. So, and that, that's needed of all of you leaders. All right, ma'am. Okay, all right, Everybody, Thanks. Major General Maggie Woodward. Thank you, ma'am, for coming.